All right, everybody, chapter eight, section three, the product and quotient theorems. To get us started, let's find the product of these two complex numbers. Now, I can find the product by using the FOIL method, which is just distributing. Um, so it'll be something like the following. Uh, one times negative two root three, one times two i, and then i root three times negative two root three, and i root three times two i. Okay, so let's go for it. First, we're gonna have, uh, let's see, negative two root three, and then plus two i, and then you'll have a negative two times three i, and then you'll have plus two root three i squared. Uh, this will give us a negative two root three plus two i minus six i minus two root three because i squared is equal to negative one. Um, so this will be equal to a negative four root three minus four i. So we found um, the product. Now what I want you to do is consider finding the product one more time. But this time around, I want you to first convert these two complex numbers that were given to polar form or trigonometric form and then multiply. Now 1 plus i root 3, if you convert it to polar form using um, the strategy from the previous lesson, you'll find that it is equal to 2 times cosine, oops, I misspelled that a little bit there, cosine of 60 degrees plus i times sine of 60 degrees. Negative 2 root 3 plus 2i will be converted as 4 times cosine of 150 degrees plus i times sine of 150 degrees. So if I find the product of these two complex numbers using their polar form, then it'll look like this. Okay, and what we can do now is multiply uh, the R values, which are the moduli or the absolute value, two times four, which of course is eight. And now for the rest of this, we can distribute. Now, when we say distribute, we mean we mean cosine of 60 degrees times cosine of 150 degrees. A cosine of 60 degrees times I sine of 150 degrees. I sine of 60 degrees times cosine of 150 degrees. I sine of 60 degrees times I sine of 150 degrees. That will give us cosine of 60 degrees uh, times cosine of 150 degrees, right? Plus cosine of 60 degrees times I sine of 150 degrees. And then let me move this up like this. Okay. Um, plus what would come next is um, I sine of 60 degrees times cosine of 150 degrees. And then finally, I sine of 60 degrees times I sine of 150 degrees. All right, I got it all, <laughs> barely on the screen here. All right, so what will this equal? This will be eight times. What I would like to do is collect all of my terms that don't have I, right? So I would like to write cosine of 60 degrees. Uh, look up here. This here does not have I. Um... This here will also not have i because i times i is i squared, which is negative 1. So this whole term will not have uh, an i on it. And a matter of fact, that plus sign will turn into a minus. Hey, guys, I noticed a mistake right here. That's not supposed to be 15 degrees. That's supposed to be 150. I'm not, you probably caught that, but make sure that's 150, okay? Okay, cool. And then I will collect all of my imaginary terms which are, here's one, i times cosine 60 degrees sine of 150 degrees, and this one, i times sine of 60 degrees cosine 150 degrees. Okay, I did it, you guys. I collected all of my 
um, imaginary terms together here. There's the imaginary unit. And then all of my uh, real terms over here. All right? Now, I hope you see what I see. Um, right here, this cosine 60, cosine 150 minus sine 60, sine 150, this is the expansion of the sum identity for cosine. So I'm going to rewrite this group using the sum identity for cosine. And then here, this is the expansion for the sum identity for sine. So I'll rewrite that using that identity. Look at that, you guys. Using the identity, the both uh, sum identities for cosine and sine, I've rewritten all of this, right? So look at how convenient this is turning out to be. Okay, let's move this up. Now watch this. This is equal to eight times cosine of uh, 210 degrees plus I times sine of 210 degrees. That's the product. If you want to do shorthand, you can. 8 times cis 210 degrees. So the whole point of going through that example um, was to show you how the product of two numbers in polar form basically boils down to uh, you multiplying the absolute values, 2 times 4, which gave us 8. And then 210 degrees is just the sum of the arguments of your complex numbers. So all you have to do when you multiply complex numbers in polar form, all you have to do is multiply the absolute values, add the arguments. So here's the product theorem, you guys. If you have two complex numbers written in polar form. So r sub 1, that's your the absolute value or the modulus of the first complex number. Uh, cos theta sub 1 plus i sine theta sub 1. So theta sub 1 is the argument of the first complex number times the second complex number, which has absolute value r sub 2 and argument theta sub 2. The product is simply going to be r sub 1 times r sub 2, so multiply the absolute values, and then cosine of the sum of your arguments, like that, plus i times sine of your arguments, like this. Okay? So basically, add your um, uh, multiply multiply your absolute values and add your arguments. Shorthand, if you want, will be r sub 1 times r sub 2 times cis of theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2. Okay? So once we look at a couple examples, you're going to see how simple this operation is, um, how simple it is to multiply complex numbers when the written in polar form. Okay, check out this first example. Find the product of these two complex numbers. Okay, guys, I want you to see how simple this is going to be. So all we have to do is multiply the absolute values, 4 times 5, which is 20, and then add the arguments. So 120 degrees plus 30 degrees. So then the product is 20 times cis, of 150 degrees. Done. Done. I mean, absolutely. Right? This is way simpler than even foiling. You know how I did in the very beginning? How we had the complex numbers written in standard or rectangular form and then we foiled? This is this beats that. This is really simple. Now, um, we found the product. The second part of the instructions say write it in rectangular form. So we will do that now. Okay? I'm going to change the color just so that you can see that we're answering the second part of this. Okay, guys. Um, remember, cis 150 degrees means cosine of 150 degrees, which is negative root 3 over 2, um, plus i times, and then sine of 150 degrees, which is 1 half. Okay? Distribute 10, and you get negative 10 root 3 plus um, 10i. 
and this is the product written in rectangular form. I hope you think that's as cool as, as I think it is, okay? I just think it simplifies things. Let's look at another example. Matter of fact, let's look at the quotient theorem, which is so, so, so uh, similar to the product theorem. So here's the quotient theorem, everybody. If you have a complex number, written in polar form, of course, divided by another complex number written in polar form, all you have to do to divide is to go ahead and divide the absolute values, and then, you could probably guess here, and then subtract the arguments. This actually works quite similar to um, quite similar to the quotient theorem that we've seen in other areas of mathematics. I'm trying to fit this in there. There. All right. So in this case, uh, oh, first, before I say that, if you want short form here, just in case anybody is fans of uh, a fan of short form, it would be like this, like that. Okay, you guys, um, basically what I'm trying to get you to do is to divide the absolute values and subtract the arguments. All right, so let's see this um, theorem at work. Okay, you guys, example two, find the quotient. We're going to use the quotient theorem. Write the results in rectangular form, all right? All right, here we have 27 cis 45 degrees, 9 times cis of negative 180 degrees. Let me say something. Um, I don't know if you recall how you would perform this operation of division if these complex numbers were written in standard or rectangular form. It's quite a bit of work. You would have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator and then simplify. So it is some work. Here you're going to find, I hope, that this is really, really, really simplified. All right. So all we have to do is divide the um, absolute values and then subtract the arguments. So it'll be 45 degrees minus negative 180 degrees. Pretty simple. So that'll be 3 times cis of 45 degrees plus 180, de 180 degrees. So that's 225 degrees. That's the quotient. Done. Now, they want, so that was simple, wasn't it? Now, they want your answer written in rectangular form, which is also called standard form. So it'll be 3 times cosine of 225 degrees, which is negative root 2 over 2, um, uh, plus i times sine of 225 degrees, which is also negative root 2 over 2. So I'll write it like this. Like that. Let me move this up for us. So then your final answer is going to be negative 3 root 2 over 2 minus uh, 3i uh, root 2 over 2. This is your quotient written in rectangular or standard form. All right, you guys, that's it. I am the product and the quotient theorems are going to be super helpful in the sections that are to follow. So um, I hope you found this really helpful, um, a short lesson here. So that's it. That finishes this section. I'll catch you in the next lesson, which will be for section 8.4, which will be De Moivre's theorem and power and roots of complex numbers. But for now, um, I'll catch you later.